I am Craig Cohn. I teach agricultural science, environmental science, and biology at Waterford Union High School. Cellulase is the enzyme that breaks down cellulose, and the reason it's important for bioenergy is because cellulose is made of glucose monomers. And in order for yeast to ferment cellulose, it has to be broken down into glucose first. And so cellulase is necessary to turn cellulose into a fermentable product that could be made into ethanol or other biofuels. And the fact that cellulose is the most abundant organic molecule on the planet is good evidence that this may be a very viable source as a renewable energy. Basically my job was to take uh, test tubes with filter paper and a growth medium and design a lab in which students could collect samples from the environment, inoculate the test tubes with that sample, and then check for the filter paper every single day to see if the filter paper was unchanged, if there was any rips or tears or fading, or if the filter paper broke off completely. What we were looking for was to see if there was cellulase activity based on filter paper degradation. In other words, if there was cellulase being produced by the microbes, the filter paper itself would be broken down. I think one of the main benefits of this lab is it has students think like scientists more so than any other. The way we introduce the subject is I have students basically think about bacteria and microbes and where they grow, how they grow, what aids their growth, and this really becomes sort of a cross-disciplinary lab where they have to put into this lab ideas that relate to biology, to chemistry, to agriculture, to environmental science, and they have to form connections over all these different ideas. The systems thinking element of this lab is probably more intense than any other that we do. We actually had some discussion questions on the board in dry erase boards in groups of four. They had to answer these four questions, and that was a follow-up from the notes in lab they'd done the week before and kind of an introduction to the actual procedure they were going to do that week. And so just kind of a rehash of what is bioprospecting, where would we find microbes that produce the enzymes. So they had to pick four locations, and then the, when they actually went out to collect, they had to narrow it down to two. And so in their groups, they were discussing which of the two of their four they thought would be most effective and why, knowing that they would have to defend those in front of everyone in a few minutes. So we had uh, manure from the steer. We had chicken manure. We had compost. We had just wet kind of organic soil that they found under logs or benches or whatever the case may be. The ones who really went to the grossest locations typically did the best. The next day they inoculated their samples and so they had to set up their test tubes, they had to cut their filter paper, they had to add their growth medium, and then they had to add a pea-sized sample of whatever they collected. So we did have controls and so they would have to do three test tubes, a control, sample one, and sample two and then they would have to predict which one they thought was going to be most effective and then state why and then follow up with what was actually the case. This is after they've had some time to inoculate and they're checking the results and I think this is our, was our first positive result after six or seven days. This was one where I think we actually had a complete rip. Whenever they checked it they would have to mark them as either no change, possible growth, or definite growth and then explain why they circled the category they circled. I think they started to recognize patterns, you know, the similarities between the samples that worked and the ones that didn't. I think eventually they all recognized that there had to be our cellulose source, there had to be conditions appropriate for growing bacteria, and there had to be visible signs of decomposition. You know, I, I think there's, you, you kind of see that light in their eye when they see that this was something that we were directly a part of, that this isn't something that we're just doing because, you know, it might help them learn that this is something that could lead to actual breakthroughs and results and has the potential of being something that could lead to more research and development.